Danny likes to party all the time, party all the time, party all the time. It's the Going Off Podcast with Rap Critic and Muse. Muse, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing pretty, pretty good. <laughs> Man, uh, we're going to get to that a little bit later, but wow. <laughs> that was uh, unexpected. I'll just say that. Y- you know what's funny? That... For a song by a comedian in the mid-80s, it's not a bad song. I can't think of another comedian offhand. I'm probably looking over someone really obvious. But, like, the ones that are coming to my mind, like, Steve Martin, he had some singles, but they're all, like, novelty comedy songs. Uh, uh, what was his name? Um, Sam Kinison uh, tried his hand at a single, but it, too, is, like... Him just screaming the song "A uh, Wild Thing" in the way Sam Kinison does. So it like yeah, it's got a lot of rock stars on it, like a lot of big name appeal, but it wasn't really meant to be like taken seriously, you know, because it's still Sam Kinison at the end of the day. But fucking Eddie Murphy did not come to play. If you want to listen to Rick James, but you don't want to support. A man who kidnapped and drove somebody, like, across state lines or whatever the fuck he did. Eddie Murphy is there for you. He's the, uh... I heard Boy George did something similar, too, and it's like, what the fuck? What is wrong with y'all? Think about it. It it was the type of person they always were, but didn't have the power to be. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Like, you know what they say about Mm -hmm. money? It, It doesn't make you evil. It just exposes who you really were. That's a sad transition into our uh, main topic this week. All right, so I'm going to preface this by saying um, all y'all in the comments section who have been trying to give us grief when we come forward and uh, um, support the victims of abuse, uh, either physical, emotional, domestic... um, you always say, like, oh, whatever, and you always try to make a big deal about it. Well, look, now it finally happened to where someone that whose music I enjoy very much is now is now under um is now under the microscope. He's got a good bit of accusations coming out against him, so uh now now you're gonna get to see how how we deal with it. Uh Amir Van of uh Brockhampton, the literal poster child he's the face on all three saturation album covers um is now coming under some really really nasty allegations of uh sexual misconduct uh uh, um domestic abuse and uh possibly if we're gonna fucking try to rank these things sexual history with a minor these are all coming out from an ex-girlfriend or wife of his and, uh, yeah, it's piling up really bad. Amir came out and said that, you know, he completely admits that he had been very, uh, he hadn't been the best boyfriend, he hadn't been the best husband, he's made a lot of mistakes, but he's, uh, he's standing strong against the, uh, sex with a minor accusation, which, (sighs) so now, in lieu of that, we've got Every member of Brockhampton, except Amir Van, uh, they've, they're, they're ghost. They are no longer on Twitter. They're not on Instagram. And this is, this is terrible for a lot of reasons, but I'm going to go ahead and say first and foremost, the worst aspect about this is that people had to go through this. Not in any way trying to make it seem like anything is as important than the safety of the people who he had victimized. That is paramount. That is first and foremost the worst part of this story. But with that said, as a music podcast, this also affects the fact they were just signed to RCA. They have an album coming out next month. I can't imagine what someone like Kevin Abstract and the other innocent members of the group are now like, well, what the fuck do we do now? Like, I can't even begin. Where do you even start? Like, I'm sure the album is at least mostly recorded, if not, you know, being mastered now. It's got a month left. 
what do you do? Do you fucking take his parts off the album? Do you do you break up entirely? Do you kick him out? He's a founding member of the group. He's a really big part of Brockhampton, so you know, it almost looks like there is no future for the group as it stands. It looks like like either they're going to have to make a really brave stance, which in my opinion would be the right thing to do of distancing themselves from Amir or just disbanding entirely and going on your own solo ventures, but no, none of which could be easy. And um, I guess if I got to give Amir any kind of credit, it's that he actually is staying online because you, we got people like Kevin who have just completely disappeared off the face of social media, but here you have Amir who I'm sure has been getting a shit ton of crap on Instagram and Twitter. And, you know, I'm not saying that's not justified, you know? Like... What he's being accused of is terrible. And even if, I'm just going to say that, even if the one thing that he's saying he didn't do, he didn't do, all the rest of the shit is still bad enough. Like, like it's he's still not excused, even if that one accusation um, is fabricated. But at this point, I'm not going to... I'm not... You see, this is the weird thing, right? Like, this isn't the victim coming out and saying, like, like this isn't the minor coming out and saying it. So, that is the only weird part to me. Like, if it were, I'd be like, oh, shit. But it's someone saying that he had done this. Which, you know, I know there's a lot of instances where people, you know, do feel intimidated and scared and they don't come forward. Like, a lot of the instances in the Me Too movement, um, you know, people like Oprah was getting accused of, you know, why didn't you come out and speak for these people sooner? But she's like, it's not my story to tell. I wasn't victimized, so I didn't feel it was right to say anything. So it's a very complex uh, dynamic to this. But yeah, I don't really know what to do as a fan either. Like, it feels weird. Especially, like we mentioned when we were talking about the Space Jam album and we mentioned Dark Hale and we talked about that. There's lyrics now that you go back and listen to and you can't help but have that picture of him when he delivers those lines that it makes them that much harder to listen to. So it's fucked everything up, man. Like we were going to buy tickets to go see them when they came to town next month. Probably not going to go ahead and do that now because we don't even know if that shit's even going to happen. I don't know. It's, it's, uh, right now it's just a waiting game, really, because none of the other members are online to speak their piece. We have no idea what they're thinking, what they're doing. So we just gotta wait and see. So, uh, let me give you my take on it. I think, at, at first when I heard what had happened, I, you know, of course you go like, well, someone just said something on Twitter I don't know who that person is in relation to, you know, the per. you know what I'm saying? Like, because Mm -hmm. people try it like, and this sounds like me going, Oh, don't believe victims. But I'm saying people putting up false flags in order to discredit the me too movement. Right. So Mm -hmm. I'm always kind of like on guard of being like, yes, when the evidence comes out for it, boom, I'm willing to believe it. But if it's just like an accusation first and I've only seen one tweet about it, I'm like, all right, I, I see that it's there. It's not like I'm about to give, you know, uh, Brock Hampton money today, you know? So it's just like, I don't need to worry about that. That's something I don't need to think about until I see more information come out, right? And then, now, now like I said, uh, this is the first five minutes. This is my thinking within the first five minutes, right? This isn't like over the whole week that this happened. This is just like, I first heard about this and I'm like, okay, well, let's see what happens. Then what happens next is, You told me all of the Brockhampton members deleted all of their accounts. That makes me go, hmm. They don't have faith in the in the integrity of Amir Vaughn enough to stand by him in a digital space. You know, that that's what that clearly says. When you're deleting your account after a big thing comes out, I I don't know what else that could tell me other than you don't want to defend him. They're they're on tour. They've got the new album coming out. They've got a lot going on. I can only imagine that someone in the group 
who didn't do any of this, now is just getting bombarded by people asking what their thoughts are, if they're their statement. It's just easier to just, I'm just gonna fucking disappear for a while, maybe come back later? I'm not saying it's a... I'm not I'm not saying it makes him look guilty. I don't I don't believe it makes him look guilty, but I think it's I just think it's a smart thing to do for your own like nobody knows any more about the story than Amir, the victims, the members of the group don't even know, presumably unless he told them. Like they don't have answers. So I I'm putting myself in the shoes of if I had a good friend who came under fire of, of all these things, and people were coming to me. Like, these people who know nothing about the situation, I don't need to hear them, because they don't know the specifics. Like, all it is is a lot of, like, reactionary stuff, right? Now, if it was, like, victims coming forward and being like, get your boy, that has some credence, because that's somebody actually attached to the story. But when you got a bunch of people who are just, like, like calling for your heads, it's like, that's not helping anything. There's, like, 12-something members in this group. Like, right. one of them is not going to have a cool head, you know? And so, like, I could see their management going, yo, I'm taking away all your devices and shit or, or all your accounts or whatever. Because, you know, as much as people like to believe that, like, oh, these celebrities are just doing things tee all by themselves. No, there's there's money and people behind them to go, like, ooh, put this out and talk about that. You know what I'm saying? So, like... Well, especially now that they're signed to a major label. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. You know. And so, like, all right, you're signed to a major label. We have to teach you how to do PR. And then a big scandal pops off and you're a big, rowdy group. You're the next fucking odd future. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're the mm-hmm. next big thing that could really mean something and like you guys could be bringing a movement with you and this uh, this scandal has come upon you no no no. you guys need to shut up right now i'm probably not gonna be listening to him a bit because it would be a little difficult with some of amir's uh lyrics uh you could kind of draw conclusions i saw that people uh are canceling people the the new thing is putting people on pause of like, you know, I'm not gonna support you right now because of this. This looks really bad. But if it comes out that, hey, you know, it wasn't what I thought it was, all right, you're 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 unpaused. I'm back to supporting you now because I gave you a minute. That's what I think I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna say everyone should. Everyone's reaction to this is obviously gonna be different, and I'm not saying you're opinion or feelings on this are right or wrong regardless of what they are but that's just what i'm gonna do in this instance is you know let this play out let this uh you know see where this goes not buy the tickets to the show until i find out anything more uh or see what their reactions are because i think you know cool heads right now are definitely um the uh the smart way to go about it just let it play out because a we're not involved at all. The only way this involves us or affects us is that it's an artist that we enjoy. Other than that, we're not friends. I don't know them personally. I don't owe them anything. They don't owe me anything. They don't owe me an answer, honestly. Like, I'd like one, but we're whoever. Like, the only people they owe answers to are the victims, the families of victims, whatever. And, like, I'd started out this whole thing by saying no one's safety or life, or well-being is worth uh, the music or the entertainment. And if it comes down to making that judgment call of, they've done some terrible things, I don't want to support them anymore. I've said this before, I'll say it again. For every terrible person out there making art you like, there are at least 50 more people out there doing things just as good, if not better, that you just don't know, you just haven't discovered. It might just take a little bit more time to find them, But I'm sure there are other people making music like Brockhampton that if you ultimately find yourself not wanting to support them, there's other people out there who'll be more than happy to pick uh, pick up the ball and take your money. So, you know, I'm just going to say give this a minute, let it play out, see what happens.
This week on the Going Off Podcast, we have two Patreon requested album reviews, starting off with Triple X, or 30, or whatever you want to call it, by Danny Brown, requested by Gavin Martinez. And if there's an album that you would like to request for the Going Off Podcast, it is a one-time pledge to either patreon.com slash rapcritic or patreon.com slash muse. Check the pages for details. I don't want it to make it sound like I think that he is a gimmick, but... I didn't think the songs where he was doing his, uh, what's the word I should use? Roger Rabbit his voice? default. <laughs> no, uh, actually the opposite. The, oh, uh. the like, normal, toned down, uh. like, what is probably everyday voice. Yeah, yeah. I didn't care for those as much, and I was wondering if the voice, the put-on, the persona, uh, was a big part of the appeal and if without it that you know i wouldn't enjoy the songs as much but i think honestly even beyond that the tone of the songs were different also like you could tell there was a shift in the album where there was like there was a very solid obvious line drawn where it was like all right enough of that i'm doing this now i was like oh yeah okay well, I actually thought the opposite. I liked the second half more than the first half when he toned Wow, down. Yeah, okay. Yeah, when he toned down and he, and actually it kind of reframed the earlier songs in a way for me because that it felt like he starts off, you know, I'm going to die like a rock star. Ah, it's written in pock blood. Ah, this is my radio song. Ah, nah, nah. You know, him him doing all this like silly outlandish stuff is like the mask you know, the voice is like, right. the voice is like, it's literally a caricature. And I, I make fun of it, like saying like, oh, this is a cartoon character. But it's like, it is, it's his facade. It's his, this mm. is a joke. You know, uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just uh, like, oh yeah, I'm just going to die like a rock star <laughs> and I don't care. <laughs> but then you get, when his voice starts to get like calmed down, he starts to, you know, you, you hear him really dealing with the, the, the mortality, you know what I'm saying? Of the shit, of, of, of the drugs that he's using and. And, like, it starts to feel more grounded and it starts to really mean something. So I, I thought that was kind of interesting. Like, because, I, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like after a certain point, his voice goes down and it sort of stays there for a while. At one point in the album, he even, like, starts a song by doing his, Jack! And he, and he kind of goes like, Jack! <coughs> <coughs> like he can't do it. And it was like, oh, I okay. Yeah. That's kind of interesting. Oh, oh, there was a song where he eats out girls, and that would be... Okay. Oh, yeah. Like, I, I kind of thought that was whack. Like, on one hand, I'm like, oh, a song about eating girls out. Okay, that's cool. But then it was like, it was right after the radio song, and it was just like, oh, yeah, huh. it, aren't radio songs just gimmicks? <laughs> now, here's my song where I'm trying to get the uh, the female audience. You know what I'm saying? This is like, uh, but you're doing it too, bro. You know? <laughs> yeah, so, I can see that. Because, like, the beat didn't even match, like, his typical style. So it was like, I, you could tell he was going out of his way to change shit. You know what I'm saying? I think it was the I Will song. Um, mm. And then uh, uh, Outer Space, where he goes, I keep the bitch wet around you, she's a cactus. Which, ca <laughs> cactuses withhold water, so... I she's wet around me, around you, she's a cactus. Danny Brown doesn't understand the inner workings of a cactus. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, and then when he goes like, I love a feminist bitch, ooh, it gets my dick hard, so no apologies for all the misogyny. I just want your company to come and watch some porn with me. And I was just like, uh, okay, you didn't, like, what? I think it was like, uh, f like, I love feminists or whatever, so I'm gonna purposely piss off feminists so they come around me and protest me so they'll be around me. I thought that's what, what he was getting for there. Like, I, like, the only way he could get their attention is to, like, piss them off and have them around. I just said it so you talk to me. Like, that's really, like, some playground shit. That's some fucking, like, he likes you so he hit you on the arm, like... Yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty much what I thought he was going for. <laughs> now, now that you put it that way, I'm seeing a familiar name in the in the track lists. And earlier we talked about how the production on the album wasn't as on par with the other album that we had it talked wasn't about. As where crazy and out there, yeah, yeah, right. 
And as I'm looking, I'm seeing our pal, uh, Paul White, on a couple of these tracks. Not many of them. He's only on, like, three total, I think? And it's it's similar because when we talked to um, Open Mike Eagle, Open Mike Eagle kind of had the same thing, in my opinion, to where when we talked about his uh, his album from a few years ago, Paul White did the production on that album also. And then when it came down to listen to his one from last year, I was like, huh, I, I miss Paul White. And like, he adds so much production wise, like his beats are so fucking awesome that like this album and I hate to say it, but the last uh, Open Mike Eagle album uh, weren't on the same par with the beats and the production. Some of them were fucking crazy, but not consistently. You know, there were only a few that really stood out. And even a few songs that even stood out lyric-wise. Like, there really are kind of few and far between on this. But, I don't know if it was that song or another one where he literally said, um, he commented about a woman's pussy smelling like cool ranch Doritos. (laughs) Are you familiar with the series, uh, Hot Ones? Where it's a guy, he sits down with people and they eat hot wings and they, like, they just kind of do an interview, but, like, they're dying because of the fucking hot wings. Um... He did one with uh, Danny Brown, and he asked him about that lyric, and he was just like, I don't know, man. <laughs> like, he really didn't know how to explain it. It's like, so what about Cool Ranch Doritos? And he's like, I don't know. <laughs> really, like, I-, I don't know. It just came to mind, I guess. Scrap or die. That was... Yeah! So, especially at that moment was where I was kind of like... This album's really coming together. Ah, produced by Paul White. Made sense. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there you go. Because, like, there you have the it. production of that song matched so well with his voice. And, like, I don't... It was weird. It was just, like, as I... Because you hear little things, like, hammering and nailing. It's just, like, little things happening in the background. And the song is about how they're going into people's houses and, you know, stripping the copper wiring and shit like that. And it's, like... So you can, like, imagine it happening. It's just, like, the imagery that he gives telling you the specifics of it. And it's just like, whoa, your family is doing this. This is something your family did. Like, I, it, like imagine that for a second. <laughs> you know, like, really take in the reality of, like, this isn't, like, I'm hanging out with my friend. This isn't Kendrick Lamar's I'm hanging out with my friends and, oh, we're getting up to some trouble. This is, like, the people he has dinner with every night that are supposed to teach him about morality. And, come on, son, we're we're jacking some fucking people's houses. Like, holy shit, that's horrible. This is Kendrick, but on Good Kid Med City, when his parents are calling him, they're like, we're gonna be stripping another house today, son? Oh, is that boy on the phone? Tell him we're gonna be stripping some crap of (laughs) (laughs) Get the whole fucking family involved. It's like the family skit. And the and the homeboys skit mixed together. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when his fucking family are his homeboys. Yeah, I was just like, oh, like that explained so much. <laughs> like I was just like, Jesus yeah. Christ! Like that was so, that was this person's life. Like, oh my God, you know. And then so it would like. That's what I mean by like the rest of the album, just sort of the earlier stuff kind of gets justified by how he goes into detail mm. and shit, you know? So, where at first it's like, oh man, this is just like a silly character, he's just saying silly things, and then it's just like, oh, okay, he's really, you know, like he's trying to say something about that character, you know what I'm saying? Um, like when it, mm. like, die like a rock star, it sounds like the typical cliched shit, but it's just like, why is he mentioning all of these people and the specifics of how horrible their lives are and treating it like a joke? And then it's like, but that that's what he likes to do. You know, like, remember the Ain't It Funny video where it's just like, I yeah. have a serious problem. Isn't it hilarious? And I'm joking with it, you know, because that's how I cope with it. But, like, I, like, I can laugh at me, but the fact that you guys are laughing at me is something that I'm profiting off of, so I'm okay with it. But at the same time, I'm like... Is this good for me mentally? Because now I feel like I have to keep giving them this type of music. And so I feel Mm. like, you know, I have to go back to my quote unquote muse. And so this is the thing that like sends me in that downward spiral. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like I get a very, he's very aware of this. And that's what I feel makes him a really good artist. Self-awareness. A lot of artists are saying the exact same sort of thing. Like, I love fucking bitches, da-da-da-da. But like, there's no point in the album 
uh, there's no point in their albums where you get the feeling that it's like, what underlies this? Because you're not just doing this just because you want to. You know, you're not just fucking other people's girlfriends because you just felt like it. Ha ha ha. It's like, there's something, there's something going on in your mind where you feel like you need to have, you know what I'm saying? And I felt like I really got that with this album. I got the, I got the silly caricature, but then I also got the reality of who he was. We hadn't mentioned it, but I love the chorus to Pock Blood, where he kind of goes in this whole thing about like what his music would make otherwise like innocent people do. Right. Fucking make Sarah Palin deep throw till she hiccup. Make <laughs> TD Jakes round his bitch doing stick ups. Like holy shit! <laughs> I thought the imagery on that shit was so fucking good. Flow that make Gandhi grab the burner, want to shoot shit. Rhymes that make the Pope want to get his dick sucked. <laughs> <laughs> I started off this album like ah, I didn't really like it, but it was like the more I started to reflect on like exactly what he was doing, I was just like, actually, <laughs> I might. You know what? Ugh. I might have to go on ahead, bro. I might have to give him four, four and a half out of five. How's that? How's that? I'm thinking along the lines of a solid four, mm. round, it, uh, round it down uh, because of a few, but I still think it's really solid. Like, I would definitely suggest if... If you had only heard the other one and you're you've been ignoring this one, like I'll admit I had for a while, mm-hmm. um, you're doing yourself a disservice because this definitely adds to the overall picture uh, that is Danny Brown. There's a lot of great songs on here, you know, a, a few of them that you know might not hit as hard, yeah, yeah. a little weaker, might not stick with you, but the ones that are great are really worth it and kind of make up for those uh, shortcomings. So. I would give it a strong four, definite recommendation. Check it out if you haven't already. And it's actually made me want to listen to the other ones too, like listen to old and, yeah, yeah. and whatever the fuck the other one was. Like I want to hear all of his shit now because I feel like I've been missing out. Oh, uh, for sure. So let's. So w- what do we got next? What's the, what's the next album we got? Your boy. You know him. You love him. Now I know this dude from the six one six rewind uh, song from Cunning Linguist. Back in like 2003 and shit, when I first started oh, getting into shit. underground hip hop and shit, yo. So when I saw Tone Def, I was like, oh snap! I was like, all right, we about to get, we about to get hit with them, them rapid fire rhymes and shit that would make Buster Rhymes and an Eminem track blush, yo. Like I know mm. my boy. And then the first song started, and it was just like, wait, are we sure this is the same Tone Def? Because this. Is- is this the same time? <laughs> like, I didn't think that was that common of a name, but... <laughs> like, right? Like, is there another tone deaf? Like, I'm getting hit with, like, a, you know, movie soundtrack songs. Like, what is this? You know what I'm saying? I was like, it's epic. I dig it. But it wasn't necessarily what I was expecting. So I was like, uh, all right, all right, fine. I guess we're just listening to this. I look at the running time. I'm like, oh, fuck. This is an hour and, like... 15 minutes or whatever, I was like... It's almost the length of a full-length uh, fucking motion film. picture. Yeah, I was like, okay, alright, well, let's do this. You know, like, I'm gonna be listening to, you know, Vangelis for the next hour and a half, I guess. Alright, let's do it, you know. Um, I uh, I posted something on Twitter, a question uh, to, to my followers. I said, has there ever been an album that you listened to and you recognized that it was good but you still didn't like it. <laughs> that That's my experience with this album. Like, I was listening to it. I was like, I can see how this is a good song, but I don't like it at all. <laughs> like, and, okay. there were multiple points in the album where, like, he was going in. Like, we didn't even, we didn't really delve into, like, how much speed rapping is part of yeah, okay. this album. It's a yeah. big fucking chunk of it. And it's like, <laughs> I'm impressed. But we talked about it before with Tech 9 and you know what? I think I'm finally just able to admit to myself, I just don't like speed rapping. <laughs> I've finally been able to admit it, it to it, myself it because he was doing it. I was just like, I just don't enjoy this. <laughs> like, I don't think it should be required for me to have to read up and find out what the fuck you're saying. If I can't tell, like, if you got, like, a voice that's kind of odd, like Danny Brown, if someone can't make out what he's saying, you know, that's one thing, but 
If we're fucking, like, speed rapping, you're doing that shit on purpose. Like, I don't know. Like I said, I'm impressed. It obviously is a talent and a skill that he has mastered. I could just do without it. <laughs> the first track, which is, I'm pretty sure, like, six minutes or some shit. It's, like, five minutes. And, and like I said, I thought it was, yeah. like, oh, I guess this is, like, you know, a different guy. But then, like you said, the rapping comes in, and I'm just like, oh, wait, it is him. I'm just like, this is, <laughs> this motherfucker is, like, really thinking outside the box. And you know what's really funny? Usually when people come to that track where they're like, man, I influenced all these people. I'm responsible for all this, and what what thanks do I get? You know what I'm saying? Like, I've been innovating since before you got, and, like, motherfuckers have put on, like, two mixtapes at this point. You know, but they're, like, talking about, like, <laughs> man, I'm changing the game. You know, I'm going to I'm gonna switch it up. I'm doing all these things. But then, like, I listen to Tone Deaf, and, you know, we're two track, uh, three tracks into the album, and he's, like, showed me just how varied of an artist he can be. And so, like, mm. when he says, oh, now all you motherfuckers want to sing, I was, I've been doing this shit. I've been on that shit. And it was just like, yeah, this motherfucker's been out since, like, what, the late 90s or some shit? Like, he yeah. really fucking means it. Like, it was just like, I was doing this singing shit long time ago, and everyone said that it was whack. Oh, but when the famous guy does it, when Kanye does it, when so-and-so does it, puts a little auto-tune on this shit, now it's the shit. You know, and I was like, I was like, yo, I actually feel what you're coming from right now, dude. Because it's like, this dude's <laughs> actually been in it for a while and been experimenting. And, and like like he said, like, oh, you called me alternative back then, but now it's the mainstream, so am I still alternative? Or, you know, I was like, all right, I mm. see you, bro, I see you. And, yo, when he gives you the detail, the fucking detail of what he's gone through in his life and what he's worked up to, and, and especially, you know, with the, and they watched him, and they laughed, and they watched him, and they laughed. When he's talking about, like, you know, all the different shit he did throughout his career and, like, how people's reactions changed, you know what I'm saying? Um... I don't, like, impressive, impressive stuff, impressive musicality, impressive lyricism, but like you said, <laughs> there comes a point where you're just like, okay, like, seriously, after track three, I was honestly like, this is a classic album right here, like, only three, what, how long is this fucking album, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me go... It's an hour and 18 minutes. Yeah, an hour and 18 minutes. Dude, he could have stopped at track four. Like, <laughs> this shit was so good. I was just like, this is incredible. Why are you trying so hard? Like, <laughs> Well, see, here's the thing, right? <laughs> it's it's a collection of EPs put together. Oh! I, I, I saw something. I read something about, like, some sort of tangential thing about, like, oh, this is supposed to be part of this. But I was like, okay, whatever. And I just listened to the album. Okay. Yeah, it's 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 a collection of four EPs uh, put together. Wow. So what you got is um, the first... Wait, I'm sorry here. Um, yeah, the, uh, the first four tracks make up the uh, EP called Glutton. Well, shit, I was right. Then, <laughs> yeah, you're exactly right. Uh, then there was a five-track EP called Demon. Then there was uh, another one called Hunter. And then I think instead of releasing the fourth, he just released the entire album, like with the three and a fourth EP, just like tacked on the end. So that's like the the solid cohesive thing. Right, right. But yeah, it was released over a a, a, a period of um, a little over a year. It looks like, um, just in parts. So I think that's yeah, how it needs to be you are absolutely to. on the nose. Yeah, that's how it needs to be, dude. How do I do this, man? How do I do this? <laughs> I didn't even know that. And I'm listening to this album. I was like, you know, you could have split this up. And these could be like four classic albums. And lo and fucking behold. Yeah, you totally should have done that. <laughs> you see, I think I think that's exactly what my problem with it is. It's too fucking much. Yeah, it's just like. Like, man. if it was just the f first four or any one of these just on its own, I think that would have been fine. Me personally, I didn't like that first track at all. I thought it was annoying. Really? You didn't? The, and then left, and, and then, like, I didn't care for I that. I love that. It picked up for me after that one. Uh. I was like, fuck that. I'm good after that. But um, I think my main issue with the album, not even the speed rapping, honestly, after a while I thought it was 
it got a bit much. Like the album is the album is exhausting because it's too much. Yeah, that's the it's thing. It's too it's, it's too bloated. It's presented but, the wrong way. It really needed to be like, yeah, the exact way that he did it originally. Like here's you know four or five really heavy songs, and then another four or five really heavy songs, and then. Yeah, and, like, maybe this is just supposed to be like, hey, here's the Spotify playlist where you can play them all. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you want to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But as an yeah, album... Yeah, instead it's released. Yeah, as an album to buy and listen to, I could not imagine going through the entire hour and 18 minutes. So, as you had mentioned, uh, the runtime on some of these tracks, uh, co- going to the end of it, there's, like, a track that's either, what, eight or nine minutes? <sighs> Look... My main issue, <laughs> oh boy, my main issue, not even the speed wrapping, it's just some of these tracks, like, it started out really weak with the production, like, like the first track, I think even like the first couple, like, I thought it was like, really weak, but then after a while they get so fucking bloated and overblown, yeah. so over the top. Like, competitive to where... nature could have been two songs, like. <laughs> yeah. And some of these tracks are, like, a couple verses, and then it's just minutes of just music. And I didn't care for that. Not on a hip-hop album for me. I don't, I don't, I don't care for that. Like, either you, you do the song, and it's lyrics over the whole thing, or, you know, I don't know. I, I wasn't... I, I'm, I'm gonna go back to keep saying I was impressed by all of it, right? That's like the speed rapping. Impressive. Uh, the musicality and the... Or, and the, or, and the uh, the, the orchestra in the background, impressive. The lyrics, sometimes impressive. Other times, they didn't really hit me as hard. But I just, like, I'm, I'm going to end up giving it like a four, but I'm never going to listen to it again. And it's a really weird feeling to recognize that, like, this is really good, but I don't at all like it, and it isn't for me, and I'm never going <laughs> to listen to it again. That It's so crazy. You basically had my mirror thoughts... Like, but but I did enjoy it, like, more directly. I was able to get into it because of the musicality. But at the same time, I was thinking, I couldn't imagine recommending this to everyone. You know? <laughs> like, this is... Oh, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> as, I would recommend a few of the EPs as individual listens. Yeah, definitely, definitely. But this as a whole thing, nonstop, front to back, is too much. Yeah, yeah. But, um... And it's weird to say, like, because I remember you said before in the show, sometimes you're listening to an album and, like, three, four tracks in. I think you said this about the Janelle Monet album, where it was like, I can't take it. It's so good. This one, for me, it was like, I can't take it. It's just too much. <laughs> like... <laughs> I, and that's weird to tell an artist, quit doing so much. Uh, you know what it is? Because it's the diff- you want them to go extra. You want them to do their best. You want them to give you the most they can, but... Sometimes their most is just too much. You know, it's the difference between, like, having popcorn where you're like, I, I, I'm just eating it mindlessly. And, like, you know, having a dinner where it's, like, a really rich sort of, like, um, um, ice cream and, like, cheesecake. You know what I'm saying? And you're just like, man, I, uh, uh, it's good. It's definitely good. But I can't finish this right now. You know what I'm saying? That is, that is a perfect example because I could <laughs> eat popcorn all day. Yeah, yeah. You know, just nonstop. Because it's light, you know? It isn't indulgent. But yeah, I love steak. I can't eat it all day. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly what this is. This is your steak. You that know, is dead on. You know, uh, like, yeah. <laughs> this is the special occasion <laughs> album. So yes, I give you your props. Bro, you did it. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna hate on you at all. In a, in, a, in a perfect world where people are doing nothing but listening to music all day, yes, this is a five out of five. But for everybody, everybody... <laughs> like <laughs> like even like people that are into hip hop that I know like I I couldn't imagine telling them to listen to this and also there's the you know f bombs peppered throughout so that kind of takes it down a little bit too you know yeah yeah, yeah. And it's just like oh it's 2016 you still do okay all right no no no, no. yeah that was my thought like I can't even excuse that it's shit like, sure 2016 same, you know better your sure same love came out in like 2013 but okay <laughs> <laughs> like th- that's the fucking that's the cutoff date. That's the line in the sand. <laughs> if you're saying that shit after 2013, you just want to say it. <laughs> it's like there's no way you don't know that this is a problem, bro. Yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> you heard the song. <laughs> 
There, I'm not even buying for a second that you just missed that one. <laughs> How about lyrics wise because it's hard to tell with some of the times because it is speed rapping but were there parts of the album that like grabbed you lyrically like the Danny Brown album did because for me I it's so most of it I'll I'll admit a lot of it just went over my head because of the fucking speed rapping competitive nature I, I thoroughly enjoyed I was able to follow them all throughout that um and then mm. oh when he had that filthy song we were just talking about man that shit went in <laughs> Which one? Uh, Filthy, where he's just like, I want to come inside that ass, girl. I want to watch you creeping out. It's just like, Jesus. Oh. <laughs> I was like, okay, all right, all right, yeah, do you, bro? It's like, this, this song is called Filthy, parentheses, XXX. Like, it's like, I'm not fucking around with you. Like, you saw, I went hard when I'm telling you about my competitive nature, the fact that I'm very competitive, and I went really hard in making a song about telling you how competitive I am. If I'm going to make a fucking sex song, this is going to be porn. Like, I'm going to give you porn. <laughs> it was like, Jesus, <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's like, all right, all right, bro. This is what I mean. It's like, it works, but like, you really got to be in that headspace. <laughs> but, yo, mm. Cinder fucked with my head. What the, what the fuck was he saying? I, I felt so dumb. Just like the 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 the, the, uh, the thing that was um, um, talking the vocal. I don't know what the fuck it was, but it was like oh. time present and time past are both perhaps present in time future. And I was like, is that a statement or a suggestion or a wait? <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, wait, he said perhaps. So so is it or is it not or oh, wait? And I thought maybe it was just like a random word generator or some shit, but apparently this is from a poem. <laughs> but I was just like, wait. No, oh, okay. Uh, it was like, words move, music moves, only in time, but that which is only living can only die. And I was like, and then it cut off there, and I was like, wait, you can't just leave me with that. What the fuck did that mean? Like, <laughs> you gotta explain that shit. And then, um, but then earlier it says, like, if all time is eitherly present, all time is unredeemable. More say that the end precedes the beginning, and the end and the beginning were always there. And it's like, I, I, you know what? I, I check out. I check out. I tap out. I intellectually tap out. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. You win. You're smarter than me, man. I don't know where the fuck this is going. Okay. It's more cultured than me, man. I can't take it. I don't, I, 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 I'm I stupid, all right? I'm stupid. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> so I just had to let that fucking track go. <laughs> mm. Um... But yeah, uh, and, and that's what I mean. Like this album really does get that heady, where it's just like, "What? Uh, oh, you're just going, man. I okay, all right, man. You know what I'm saying?" So it's like, I understand that this might not be for everyone because of just how dense. That's a that's a good word for it. How dense this album is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it never mm -hmm. lets up. There's never like a just light moment. Everything is like, this is the fucking Wagner of rap music. Like. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Which I'm sure he'd take as a compliment. I think on his uh, Twitter page, oh, sure. he calls himself like the Hans Zimmer of rap or something like that. <laughs> oh, and I was like, you know what? That is a well earned title, homie. <laughs> mm. So, uh, would five be your general rating there? Uh, I hate it because, like I said, it is enjoyable, but I don't see like five is. Janelle Monet. Five is damn. Five is you know, I can listen to it whenever. It's not just that it's technically proficient. It's that I can enjoy this whenever. You know what I'm saying? So for that, it's like eh, four and a half, four and a half, because you did put in the fucking time and effort. So I can't even front on that. But it's like I can't see it being five because it's like I'm not just gonna listen to this. You know? I'm on the same level of that where it's like, yeah, I would give this a four in how. It and how I perceived it and how I appreciated all the work that went into it, but without liking it, my own personal rating would be like a three. But it's obviously not an average album. You know, like most people wouldn't consider this a three. You didn't consider it a three. Most people would be like, wow, this is so fucking like, yeah, it is. But, you know, it's you got your own personal, you know, like people listen to pop songs on the radio they know they're not good but they love them this is kind of the opposite of that where it's like i recognize that it's good but it just isn't for me and i just didn't care for it but for the going off podcast think that about wraps it up this week 
Uh, thank you very much for checking us out. Thank you very much for listening in. If this happens to be your first time checking us out, uh, thank you, first and foremost. But if you want to listen to our older episodes, they're all on iTunes and SoundCloud. Just search Going Off Podcast. That's G-O-I-N apostrophe off podcast. Follow us on Twitter and see what we're talking about throughout the week because that tends to be what we're talking about on the podcast. You can get a little... It really is. Yeah, it's it's almost like when comics do open mic because they got like a HBO or Netflix comedy special coming up and they're they're like practicing their material. That's kind of what Twitter is. <laughs> it's the warm up. <laughs> yeah, the going off warm up. You can see where our heads are at leading into the show, so you can tell if you know if it's going to be a good one or not. Um, and obviously follow us on Patreon if you have an album that you want to request. Or if you just want to help us out with a little bit of pocket change, every little bit helps. But until next time, for the Going Off Podcast, I'm Muse. And I'm Rap Critic. And seriously, that Cinder song, it fucked me up, bro. I can't fucking, I can't take it. Is time living or is it dead? Am I living right now? Is all of time happening right now?